Hey everyone, Mr. Newman here again. I got a request to do number 18 on the benchmark review, so let's get started. This one has quite a few bit parts, and there's even a part that I um, you may skip because it's honestly material that we did not cover fully in class. Um, however, if you want to be fully prepared for the benchmark, you need to be ready to learn something a little bit new. So, let's get started. First of all, they give us this big equation and say, write the equation in standard form. Remember that standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So I'm gonna uh, get rid of all the parentheses, combine like terms, and move everything to one side. Well, first of all, we have to remember that x minus two squared, that is x minus two times x minus two. Don't forget the middle term, and remember to multiply your polynomials correctly. If you just say, oh, that's x squared minus two squared, you're missing out on those middle two terms, the negative two x and the negative two x, which combine to negative four x. So that's what I'm going to replace x minus 2 squared with. Then I'll distribute the 4, and I get this right here. Then I'm going to move everything to one side. So subtract x squared from both sides and subtract 10 from both sides, and uh, combine like terms as well. So we get 3x squared minus 12x plus 6 equals 0. That is the equation in standard form. Now, part B is a little confusing because it says the y-intercept of the function, and they didn't give us a function, but I think the test writers just wanted us to treat it like a function, so we will. Um, if that was a function, the y-intercept, you plug in 0 for x, remember, on the y-intercept, and the y-intercept is always at constant, so 6 is the y-intercept, because if you have 0 for all the x's, you have 6 is y. So really, we're treating, like, change at that zero to a y, and that's what we were treating as our equation, okay? Um, but you want that as zero for part a. I know, confusing. All right, c, change the equation from part a to vertex form by completing the square. Completing the square is the one skill that's very tricky, so I'm gonna take you through how to do that. If you do not wanna learn something new right now, you may skip this part and go on to part d. And honestly, part D can help you figure out part C in reverse. So first thing we have to know is that what is vertex form? Well, vertex form is when you write equations like this, a times x minus h squared plus k. The reason it's called vertex form is because h comma k is our vertex. And what's nice is if you did part D first, find the vertex from graphing it, then you could find the, then you could work backwards, plug in the x and y values of the vertex for h and k, and just recognize that, oh, yeah, 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 because it's 3x squared, that a has to be a 3. So you could work backwards and get this uh, almost as well. However, let me show you how to complete the square. First thing you want to do is you want to rewrite the equation by factoring out the 3 from the x squared and from the x term, okay? That 3 in front is going to help us find a perfect square. And in order to find a perfect square, you look on the linear term coefficient, that's negative 4 there, and you take half of it, and you add, and you square that. So half of negative 4 is negative 2, and square that, you get positive 4, and that's going to go in the first blank right there. So half of that, and squared. I'll show you why we chose that in a second. Next, you're not allowed to just add and subtract things to an equation, we have to keep it balanced. So really, if I'm gonna add that four because of the three out there, three times four is 12, I'm really adding 12 to the equation. At the same time, I also have to subtract 12 from the equation. So I'm gonna fill in that second blank with minus 12. Now, what I do? I made a perfect square trinomial right there. X squared minus four X plus four is a perfect square trinomial. Let me write it over there on the left. What is it squared? Well. Because the last term is half is the middle term halved and squared, then we know that that half, the negative 2, is the perfect square. So x minus 2 squared gives us x squared minus 4x plus 4. It's a perfect square trinomial. What's nice here is now I can change that into the perfect square trinomial. So I have 3 x minus 2 squared. And negative 12 and positive 6 gives us negative 6. So we get our vertex form. And really, I guess that should be a y because we're talking about equations now. Let me change, oops, let me erase those two as well. Those should be y's as well, y and y. Okay, so notice vertex form, completing the square, 
If you want to listen again, we could have figured that out by finding the vertex by graphing it and working backwards. The nice thing about doing this first is now we know the vertex. It is positive 2 because it's x minus h. And it's negative 6 because it's plus k at the end. So 2 comma negative 6 is the vertex. What are the x-intercepts? Oh, that's right. So you could use second trace and the minimum if you have it graphed to find that point as well, which I would recommend doing if you don't like completing the square. X-intercepts, what we can do is we can take out the GCF and we get a 3 times x squared minus 4x plus 2. And I can divide both sides by 3 here because 0 is on the right. 0 divided by 3 is 0. So I get this new equation, which gives us the same zeros. And now that I'm doing that, I can just use the quadratic formula to find the zeros, which I would recommend because it always works. So we get negative, negative opposite of negative 4 plus or minus square root of negative 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 2 all over 2 times 1. And you get 4 plus or minus the square root of 8 over 2. The square root of 8 can be simplified into 2 root 2 because there's a perfect square in there, the perfect square is 4. And once you have that, you need to divide out the, four, the 2 from each of those terms, and you get 2 plus the square root of 2. You have to use the quadratic formula in, you know, in order to get the exact zeros. If you just graph it, you'll get decimals that are not exact. But now it's asking us to graph the function. In order to do that, I'm going to make a table. I'm just going to pick three points, plug in negative 1, I get 21. Plug in 0, I get 6, and plug in 1, I get 3. But that's not enough because I can see that the, the function is still decreasing. So I'm going to do a few more. When you plug in 2, you get negative 6. Plug in 3, you get negative 3. Plug in 4, you get 6. And you see now I, I notice that it went down and then up. So I'll plot those points. You also notice how 2 comma negative 6 is my vertex because it's nice and symmetrical over the vertex. So I just connect the dots as best I can. Hopefully you can connect them a little better than I did. And that is how you graph the function. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, you can also type this, get this table from graphing it and pressing sec, or typing it into y equals in your calculator and pressing second table. And you should also be able to get this from your graph by pressing, by just simply hitting graph. And it should look very similar to that. Notice on this problem, if you wanted to, you could graph the function first and then work backwards and answer each of these in reverse order because you have the graph. That is perfectly acceptable when you have a graphing calculator and know how to use it. Thank you very much for watching.